Brought to you by State Farm. Great service, great rates. That's why 40 million drivers trust State Farm. By Ford F-Series, built Ford Tough. By Home Depot, NASCAR's home improvement warehouse. And by Wrangler, makers of Teens Company, a new generation of Wrangler. Kyle Busch leads four Rick Hendricks Chevrolets. Vickers, Gordon, Jimmy Johnson here at the Coca-Cola 600 from Lowe's Motor Speedway. Dale Earnhardt Jr. was the championship points leader at this point last season. Of course, has uh, forced a crew chief change this week. It's not exactly like Michael Jordan, uh, Jeff Hamlet, or Magic Johnson wanting a coach change. But uh, what kind of a difference will it make in currently running 25th year? It'll take a little while. The biggest thing they're looking for right now is to get Dale Earnhardt's confidence back in the team, and I think that's why Steve Mill was chosen. He's a veteran. He knows how to lead. And he should help this team in a, in a period of time. At some point, does Dale Earnhardt Jr. maybe have to take more of a role than what the crew chief is doing? I, no, I think the driver needs to drive the race car, let the crew chief do his job, but he needs a crew chief that's getting the job done, and I think that's what they were lacking. All right, so it's their first communication here at a points race, and Steve Burns has been listening in on Dale Earnhardt Jr. and his crew. Steve? We have Chris. He's not happy right now. He says his race car is tight off the corners and getting worse all the time. The windshield is also a problem to him. Don't know if you can notice it from the onboard camera, but the windshield is dirty. Mike? Steve, it was like that just before Kurt Busch's spin. It had a lot of fluid on it, as you see Dale Jr. hard at work. Mike, one thing about the crew chief change. Remember Dale, Dale Earnhardt Jr.? He's only ever had one other crew chief. He's had Tony Uri Jr. and Sr. in his Bush car, and when he came to Cup, that was his crew chiefs. So he doesn't know what he's looking for. He had Pete Rondo, the former short track driver for Maine for the first 11 races, but we remind you, it's only a 26 race season now. You have only 26 races to make the chase for the next L Cup, so time is precious. Yeah, and, and I don't mean he doesn't know what he's looking for. He just doesn't have experience with other crew chiefs to really compare another guy to what he wants. And I know he was not very happy with his car yesterday. In fact, Jeff Hammond was telling me that there was a lot of changes on that car this morning. It was one of the last cars to go through inspection. And just to put one period on that crew chief change. I've been interviewed a lot this week about it. And it's going to take a special individual to be Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s crew chief because, A, you're under a microscope 24-7. And I just think it's going to take someone that will believe in him, listen to him, but at the same time, something that Pete Rondeau never did, put him in his place when he needs to be put there. Junior running 30th right now. Here's our leader, Kyle Busch. Two and a half seconds ahead of Brian Vickers. Then Gordon and Johnson, Jarrett, and Ricky Rudd has moved up to sixth. Travis Quaffle to seventh. And one car that has backed up since the start of this race is Casey Kane. He is back to 20th position, about 17 seconds off the lead, Matt. He has dropped 16 spots. Now, I talked to crew chief Tommy Baldwin before the race. He said they made a number of changes between spring, shocks, nose weight, you name it. They changed it on this race car. The worst thing is, I can't even turn the wheel getting in. It's the worst that's been all weekend, free on entry. And Darrell, I don't know how many times we see this, that cars will start this Coca-Cola 600, and it will be off. And what will happen, someone like Kyle Busch in the five will hit that setup, just like Timmy Johnson did last year, and they will make your life miserable on long green runs like this. Yeah, and this sucker will go long green because everybody... It may not look like it, but they do pace themselves to some degree. Now, a young kid like Kyle Busch, he's not pacing this self, and he's going to put a bunch of cars a lap down early. One of them was Jeff Burton that he just passed. But let's remember, last night, several drivers hit the setup, but none of them for a long period of time. We had a lot of different leaders. Let's listen in again on Kyle Busch. Front tires just won't work with me the way I want them to. Otherwise, everything else is pretty good. 47 on you, 61 on him. Are you kidding me? Oh my good gosh. Cool. <laughs>
<laughs> it may not feel right, but it's awfully fast right now. And, and again, remember, most of these cars, they have not made a pit stop yet, and we're at lap 44, so we're about 15 to 20 laps from what would be green flag stop for most of these guys. And I know one thing. I'm out there, and my race car is not handling too good like a lot of these are. I'm going to be coming to the pit a little early if I can talk my crew chief into it. We've had drivers run well at the start of the race and drift back like uh, Casey Kane. Another of those backing up is here's Kane's getting a run coming back toward the front on Matt Kenseth who's back at 19th place. Kenseth has backed up a bit since the start of the race. Mark Martin is coming forward at the expense of Tony Stewart. Martin just passed uh, Tony who has backed up out of the top 10. Comers and goers. And we watched Mark Martin in that practice yesterday. He ran more laps than anyone, and his car, just like last week, was so good on long runs. See Rusty Wallace right there, the two car. He was making some runs to the front, but now he has fallen back out of the top ten. Is Johnny Sauter at 09. Mike, you talked about him a while ago. He continues to move forward. Good run for Sauter up into the top ten. One name you've not heard in tonight's race. Greg Biffle, there's the National Guard Ford, now up to 16th, was 16th place, 17th rather, just ahead of Jamie McMurray. And Biffle's had a ways to go, he started 29th. Right in front of Greg Biffle, the fifth Hendrick car, Terry Labonte in the 44 car, he's sitting up there in the 16th spot. Pretty good shape right now. I'll tell you what, Larry, as I look at the rundown, you see Dale Jarrett fifth, Ricky Rudd sixth. Not too far down there is a Rusty Wallace and Mark Martin 11th and 12th. Seems like the uh, the guys that have run this race a lot are kind of pacing themselves, hanging around in the top 10 or 15. Here's what this city of 200,000 people looks like. Concord, North Carolina. Lowe's Motor Speedway, aerial coverage from one of the Goodyear Tire and Rubber Company airships, reminding you to travel with peace of mind on Goodyear's new Assurance Tire. Jeff Gordon is one of the drivers who has won this race in consecutive years. Buddy Baker, the first to do it, 1972 and three. Darrell Waltrip did it twice. Jeff Gordon did it in 97 and 98. Now Jimmy Johnson's done it, and he's trying to become the first to win three in a row. Right now you see they're having a battle with some lap traffic. They go by Jeff Burton in the 31 car, who is now a lap down. And just think about that. Three in a row, that's 1,800 miles, or around 12 hours of driving with perfection. Pretty hard. It's a, a lot to ask. Now, on the contrary of Jeff Burton, the 31 car, who is now lapped down, his teammate, another Richard Childress racing car, Kevin Harvick, will ride with him here, started back in 33rd position. He's been running different grooves, working traffic. He just made it in the top 10. He's up in the ninth position. Pretty good shape right now. Five Chevys, two Fords, three Dodges in the top 10 as we cross 50 of 400 laps in the Coca-Cola 600 on Fox.